space, the final frontier. But was it created in a Hollywood basement? I don't know, probably not. But there's a new really cool movie that's coming out. And it's really weird because that's what it's all about. Also, we have the sentencing of Hannah Gutierrez Reed on the set of Rust Sentence today. Uh, we'll talk about that. And I'm glad that we have a real actor here to help us, uh, comedian Jay Darrell White, who's been on the set of many movies. I was just on the set of a TV series, and I actually got to do the gun briefing. So I think we might have a little bit of knowledge on this and probably not enough but we're gonna give it our best go uh, also oj simpson's last dying words did he mention nicole at all probably not but we're gonna talk about it all this and more on tonight's failure to stops monday society and culture news breakdown uncuffed hit it joshua the growing calls across the nation to defund the police policing as we know it. Off the charts violence in New York City. 11 people shot in just eight hours on this is Sunday. About the police officers, officers who every single day put on that uniform and they run towards danger when we run away from it. Wake up in the morning like fuck P. Diddy. Now we're just anti P. Diddy. Now that he got caught, we're anti P. Diddy. But you know what, man? Now that he got caught, I mean, we're anti P. Diddy. You don't think that they didn't know P. Diddy was doing nefarious shit all the time, but now that he got caught, all of a sudden we're like, fuck P. Diddy. But like, you don't think Kesh has been to one of those I P. Mean, Diddy they, parties? I mean, they did the same shit with R. Kelly. R. Kelly, but you know what? They still love his songs. They People out there still singing, I believe I can fly and shit. Nobody ain't, they don't care. I'm, it, as long as it won't their kid, you know what I'm saying? And I'm still going to bump R. Kelly music. I don't care. I'm going to bump his music. Just like Bill R. Cosby Kelly's one that pissed on the girl, Bill, right? Yeah, he did some of everything. But the only thing, okay, yeah. Wait, didn't he kill Aaliyah in that plane no, crash? No, no, no. He didn't kill no Aaliyah. He was, you know, he had married Aaliyah and they had got it a null and all that other stuff. And then it was coming out that he married her at too yeah, young of an age and then yeah. her plane just but crashed. See, I mean, that's his thing. He, he liked young women. Was Is it fucked up? Yeah. I wouldn't you don't think that. he had anything to do with that plane crash? No. He wouldn't okay. want to kill Aaliyah. No, why would he want to hurt her? No. Mm -mm. Okay. Uh -huh. But I'm just saying, he he did that shit. I mean, P. Diddy, man, he's he was close to a billionaire, man. When you get, oh, I thought he was a billionaire. Yeah, well, I think last time I looked, he was like right at 800 million. Damn, that's how much Taylor Swift did last year. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's, she's yeah. big, bro. But see, that, that my thing is, he is not a rapper. He produced, he basically owned the masters of, of all their music and stuff. He got big off of being uh, Biggie, uh, Craig yeah. Mack, and a lot of those acts. And stuff. I mean, my first P. Diddy album that I ever listened to was Victory. Oh, I used to bump that, as you would say. But he is 800 million. Because, you're right. Yeah, they would dude. talk about it. They'd be like, you know, Suge Knight, a different record, would be like, if you want to, but don't want a, your producer to be all dancing in the background of your videos, come to Death Row. Damn bad boy records, you know. That yeah. Was, yeah. And he was right because that's what P. Diddy was doing. He was while the artists out there doing it, he was in the background dancing, you know. But hey, it's his shit. So I mean, look what I mean, you know, business wise, it made him a lot of money. He had Ciroc, he had a clothing line. Now all this stuff coming out, oh, they they snatching stuff left and right. He done sold, and I hate to say it, but I had one of my films played on his network, Revolt TV. Oh, Blue, Blue Crossing. Yeah, and they picked it up. They picked up our, our our film, and we licensed it to them for three years. And I mean, I ain't gonna lie. Before all this came out, I was, you know, when I tell people, "Hey, check out Revolt." P Diddy's Revolt Network. My film right. was up there. That was great. Yeah, oh, P Diddy saw your stuff. Yep, he saw it. That's what you want. Because right. you're a big guy like that. But now with all this stuff come out, even though our three year license is over, and you know they, you might can go through the archives and find it on demand, you know, it's not a big thing for us, but to hear all this stuff come out, you're like, dang. Damn, that's a and you know what people ask me? Hey, did you, you didn't go to yeah, right. that party? Like, hell no. We dealt with his people. I ain't deal with him directly. <laughs> you didn't get invited to a Diddy party, bro? Hell no. Nah. I ain't no rapper. <laughs> what do you think Kesha meant by wake up in the morning feeling like P. Diddy? Does he feel different in the morning? I don't know. There's a lot of stories out there. A lot of, again, you look at all the guys that he, you know, 
I mean, their sexual lives is, is, is there, everybody has a sexual life. If there's, you know, it's just the thing about it. If you're using force or coercion, you know, you coerce uh, for, to get do it, forcing somebody to do it for 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 their gain. Yeah, you know what I'm saying against their will. They normally wouldn't do it if they're gone. If if a record deal went on the table, yeah, 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 or this and that, and then he would. He was like, hey, go over there and kiss that bitch in the mouth. Stuff like that. Yeah. You know? and, and you normally, and say you're gay. If you're gay, if you're not gay, he'll have you go over there and kiss a man or go yeah, grab his butt yeah, or something like weird, that. Man. And you will go do it because you don't, you figure if you don't do it, you're going to be out of his his circle or, or trust or whatever and and not get that that record deal and this and that. And well, it seems like it's crazy. been like the trend in Hollyweird. I mean, that's like with the whole Nickelodeon thing coming out. Oh, uh, we got a lot of people though in the live chats tonight. David J, John the Armory Knight. Uh, they got a, is this on Rumble? Are we streaming live on Rumble right now? Uh, I'm not sure, but I'll find out here shortly. Will Cray, David J, Jonathan, happy telecommunicators week. Dispatchers have a week. I thought that was in June. <laughs> that was a, that was a gay pride joke. Um, <laughs> Jonathan says, we can be assured the moon landing was not fake. Thanks to Soviet spy Robert Hansen, who did an amazing damage to our country on behalf of the Soviets. But in all his years of spying, 1976 to 2001, uh, ever, even found, ever found any evidence that we faked it, which the Russians would have loved to have had uh he's talking about in reference to the title of today's show oh he keeps going he says at one point the russians knew the exact real-time location of all of our nuclear submarines but they've never busted the myth of the moon landing come on man actually i got a buddy who's a submariner and i uh, said one of the scariest times when he was a submariner was they lose russian submarines a lot but they lost the russian submarine like when it was extremely close to the United States and they have no idea. like still to this day, I guess he says that they never really found it um, or what happened to it. But I guess he, he was trying to explain to me that they can use these like sonar things to trip something and then pass through it without passing through it type deal. I don't know. The submarine stuff's freaky. Like my brother-in-law was a submariner, retired submariner now. And he literally tells me like these crazy stories about submarines. Like that's the end of the world or submarines. Like that's where it all starts is those submarines. Yeah, I couldn't, that's why I, Navy, there's no way. I, I figure if you go in the Navy, Navy is like like the Army. Remember how the Army, if you was a career soldier in the Army, there's a possibility, highly, your ass was going to Korea. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, you know what? I talked to another um another military influencer today who I'm not gonna say his name because he didn't give me permission to use his name today, but you guys would definitely know him. Just saying it out there that you would know and trust him. And he said, uh, dude, it's been really weird here on base lately. Like they're canceling stuff. They've got um, uh, like the, the threat like the threat assessments are like super through the roof high right now. They're canceling different training things, but they're not giving the troops any information. They're just like, we're changing all these policies and training the ch changing this and changing that. And you might be going here, but you might be going there um, for duty tonight. But he's like, they're being like very vague. And he said, like, he just has this like very like, and all the troops feel it too. Like everybody's just like in this weird, what's going on. Why won't you tell us what's going on? Um, I also just had a buddy who retired today uh he started his four month separation so like he retires officially in four months but today he's got like he's off to find another job you know what i'm talking about like that kind of like oh yeah period that they give you um between retirement just coming off of like a secret service detail and we were just joking around on the phone and he jokingly said bro i don't think there's gonna be an election he's like i've been up there for the last two years and like none of nobody's even talking about an election like they're not even trying to campaign or doing anything. it's like it's not even on their radar and um and i was like really dude and he was like i don't think there's gonna be an election man. Did you and this is like a guy who's like just retired 20 plus years from the military, pretty high ranking dude, not a red pilled, you know, tinfoil hat wearing guy. Mm -hmm. This is just like a dude that was catching up. He does want to come on the podcast to talk about his time in DC awkwardly enough. But, um, but yeah, he said like, bro, it's kind of been weird that, um, like he doesn't think that there's going to be an election. Well, wow. look, Trump has been visiting HBCUs trying to get the black vote. 
Bro, I, he's got he's got more black <laughs> no, vote the than thing. any but than it, any Republicans ever got. He right went now. to a, a, a I forgot where was that. I what does say HBU Atlanta. stand for again? Historically Black University and College, and College and University. I'm sorry. So it can't be a futuristic Black College. It has to be historically. Well, I mean, the majority kidding. of them. Are. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> you know, back in the day, back in the day. But what I'm saying, he went there. He went to a restaurant. As a matter of fact, I, I think it was Chick Fil A. He went to a Chick Fil A in the hood. No, he went to a Pie Pies. If you, <laughs> or else he fucked up. <laughs> no, because they would be like, "Oh, we want chicken, more chicken." But he ordered like thirty milkshakes and gave them out. He said, hey, thirty milkshakes for everybody and, and everything." And uh, one black student, a female, was like, "You know what? I don't care what the media say about you, President Trump. You my president. Damn, dude. You vote, we gonna vote for you and blah blah blah." And I was, "Yep, that's look it. at him, dude." And I was like, "You know what's wow. funny though? Oh, it is Chick Fil A too. Good for him. <laughs> Good for him because you know that's God's chicken." But you know what's crazy though? And, and I like this isn't. I'm like not trying to be biased here. Um, put that back up there for us. Um. I like the I like the mood that that just set us that the Trump picture with the woman, yeah. uh, it's an African a historically black African American woman, yeah. <laughs> at Chick Fil A, and uh, anyway he's hugging her for those of you who can't see this. But anyway, uh, what what I was gonna say is uh, Biden has tried this several times. Mm -hmm. And it's so cringe Fail, and it's yeah, so yeah. fake. He's like, he's like holding up an ice cream cone to have somebody else lick it for him. You know, people are like, what are you he, doing? You know, he, he licking his lips at the same. Yeah. yeah. It's like, it's so weird. <laughs> so know? it's like, it's so funny to see like Trump go into the black community and just do something like, you know, it just feels real. I don't know if right. it is or it's not, but like, uh, the optics are just different when Trump does it versus when Biden does it. And or like, even when Kamala does but, something, it's just very, but, they make it very awkward. Don't they? I, I look at like, is Trump if Trump treat I mean if he that's what he got to do he need to go to the hood he need to go and and talk to people uh as long as he could just keep away from not saying the n-word I like I said I believe he'll have more African-American has he ever votes. said the n-word I don't recall him I don't saying think that, he said you the know I just I, oh oh I was at a UFC fight party and there was a black dude there I mean real black like uh, purple Oh, yeah, 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 dark yeah, charcoal black. Oh, so dark. You walk right into him, and he got drunk. Oh, real drunk. He started throwing out the word. Oh, he used it all night. Anyway, oh. just being. I mean, he was a funny character, mm -hmm. and I told, like he he told me something. He said uh, he's like, you want to say the n word, don't you? So bad. He's like, I can see it on your face, and I was like, what? And he was like, you look like the kind of guy that wants to say the n word, and I was like, why would you say that? But you know what? The crazy thing is, is like I'm absolutely the guy that's always wanted to say it. And he's like, you have. And he's like, oh man, I love it when I do. He's like, it's fun to say. It really is fun to say. And he's like, I'll give you, I'll give you a card. And I was like, dude, I'm not saying it. And he's like, no, no, no. He's like, just say it. I'm gonna let you say. It. I was like, I'm not saying it. I'm not saying it. See, it and somebody like that, and you say he's dark he's skin. If he ever, if I was there and he got to saying that, I would have looked at him. I would have started cracking. I would have what we call joning. I would have joned on his black. What, what does joning mean? Joking, you know, oh, like joking. your mama jokes. Or, Why would you, you joke know? on him? Because he trying to get you to say nigga, mm -hmm. and he black as a damn spade. Mm -hmm. You know, want you to get you to say it. he finds it funny or or whatever. Yeah. Knowing the history of that word, hell, if anything, he black as his ass is, he should not want nobody to say it. Right, right. You know what right. I'm saying? Because somebody his complexion back historically uh, uh, in slavery, dark skinned blacks would work in the fields. If you was light skinned, you were in the house. You oh, was I didn't the know that. Maids and so the cooks. You would have been that. a house. No, me. They probably would. I, yeah, as a kid, I've been running around in and out the house. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but if I stayed out in that sun and it got one shade off, but yeah, my ass has been out there in that damn cotton field. <laughs> but yeah, I'll probably, you know, especially when I'm a little four or five years old, as long as I <sighs> keep moving and shit and, you know, make sure I wash my ass, scrub, you know, don't stay in the sun. You know, they didn't, you know, they didn't put on no suntan lotion back in the days. That was so. a great, though. The, 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 the fight was great. He was, that guy was great. I'm not going to say his name on here again because you know, I don't like to say people's names on my podcast unless they they give you permission. Because then, if I start going to parties and I start mentioning people drop names, people they like get weird about that. You know what I mean? Like, they don't, I don't want to make it on your podcast. I've already heard that a couple of times at the gym that I go to. They're like, "You know, go put me a. You're not going to put this story on the podcast, are you?" And I'm like, "No, I'm not going to put this story on the podcast. You're safe, okay? You're safe." 
Oh, uh, anyway, appreciate you guys appreciate being in the chat tonight. Show <laughs> brought to you by ghostbed.com forward slash wolfpack. Uh, we've got factormeals.com forward slash wolfpack five zero. And we got the wellness company, uh, promo code wolfpack. Today's show uh, was the moon landing made in a Hollywood basement. It's the title of the show. And that's because there's a new movie coming out. And I think this is wild. We also have to talk about this whole rust armor Hannah Gutierrez thing. Do you want to hit that first, or do you want to hit this new movie first? Let's do the new movie. Let's you want to do the new movie? Let me play the trailer. Uh, Josh, what's the rule on me playing a trailer on YouTube? Am I allowed to uh, do it? I think we should be all right, as long as just every 30 or 40 seconds. Just interrupt make, it? Yeah, make some commentary about it. Okay, I'll interrupt it, uh, and then you guys can give us five-star ratings or review and be like, Teensy interrupts too much. This program is a bloated mess. Check this out. NASA needs a marketing specialist, and you are the very best. Excuse me? What are you doing? I tracked you down because I felt we had a connection. What? I'm joking. I work here now to sell the moon. Yeah, for those of you just watching, it's a moon landing, fake moon landing movie. When I'm done, those men are going to be bigger than the Beatles. Who is that? It's a real a movie. He's got my name. Not a you real fake, maybe fake thing. So I had to hire new guys. I'm here for the casting. Who's he? You. You're a juicy part. Sixty missions in Korea. I flew fifty-two missions in Korea. I flew fifty-two missions in Korea. How that? What? The whole world <laughs> will be watching. We can't afford to lose to the Russians. We need to shoot. Backup version of the moon landing. You mean to fake it? No one can ever know what we're doing. I cannot accept that. They will be on Apple TV Plus. What is my budget? Well. Oh, boy. Oh, okay. I know a lot more. I don't know. But so, um, we can go ahead and remove it. Um, that was about uh, Channing Tatum. It's got uh, man, who else was in that? Uh, give us the rundown of who's in that movie. Oh, uh, when Jane you get a chance. Jaden, Scarlett Johansson, Woody Harrelson. Oh. Yeah, Woody Harrelson. I love Woody Harrelson. Yeah, I like Woody. I like the movie. He's really good. Yeah. He's really good. Um, um, yeah. A lot of actors in there. Uh, looks like it's going to be a really good movie, but like, is this like Hollywood? Like a lot of conspiracy theorists. And, I, and if you go down the Reddit rabbit hole in your police wagon, the Reddit rabbit hole is really funny on this one because it's like, is Hollywood trying to set us up for some kind of like declassified documents that are coming out? Did some already come out and we just didn't read it good enough or what? But uh, very strange movie right now, especially when uh, TikTok and Twitter and all these things are like just super hyper focused on conspiracies right now. I'll tell you another movie that I saw. I saw half of it because the theater, I'm not going to name Regal. I'm not going to say it, real. You know, I'm not going to say their name. But they screwed me. You know, the ticket was wrong, and I ended up going in and saw half of the movie. Caught the, oh. It was like a two-hour movie, and I caught one hour of it. And when it went off, I was like, what the hell? Did I miss something? That was short as hell. And then as we were walking out, the guy said, yeah, it started at one. I said, oh. And I looked at my ticket, and they gave me the 7 o'clock ticket that's supposed to be in the side. I was in the right theater. Right, at the wrong time. I was like, I'll be damn. But Civil War, yeah. That's so you oh you only God. saw an hour of I it. I saw an hour of it, and I was like, wow. So yeah, we've got Civil War coming out, and then you've got this moon it's or it just came out, and then you got this moon landing movie, which is called uh, what's the name of that movie again? Fly me to the moon. Fly me to the moon. Um, <clears throat> which by the way, which also makes me wonder. Like I wondered the old Red Hot Chili Pepper song. Space, the final frontier was made in a Hollywood basement. I never knew were they referring to Star Trek was made in a Hollywood basement, or are they trying to say that space and the moon landing was made in a Hollywood basement? Love to know what you guys think in the chats. Do you think, uh, if you can help me on this one, what your opinion on it is, do you think the Red Hot Chili Peppers was, were, they, do you think they were in the song? Space is the final frontier. Space, the final frontier was made in a Hollywood basement. What do you think? Some people think it was a Star Wars reference along with a Star Trek reference. I don't know. I don't know. Guns and Cafe in the chat says that I need to watch Unthinkable with Samuel Jackson. Oh, okay. Um, is that an older movie or a new I movie? Think it is. 
Unthinkable. Let me put that up. Uh, can you find that for us, Ted Leg? Unthinkable. Is that a is that a new movie, an old movie? Yeah, well, I know because Samuel Jackson is a hard working man. He he just don't do A list movies. He he do B C D. Oh, he'll do everything. He, yeah, he yeah. He's like Nicolas Cage. Yeah, he will. What does that say? Came out in 2010. Unthinkable is okay, a okay. thriller directed by Gregor Jordan, starring Samuel okay. Jackson. I mean, yeah, but, I guess we'll watch it. But what's crazy is, man, that Civil War movie. Yeah. Some people think that. Don't spoil it for us. That's, <laughs> I'll put it this way. Some people think if Trump get elected, we're going to have a Civil War. I, I mean, I'm and, and that's crazy this. because, like, do you remember when everybody was like, you know, when last election was if Trump gets in, there will be World War Three. Right. Biden gets in and we're so close to World War Three. I can taste the napalm. You know what I mean? Because they're going to bring back napalm for this world war. They have to. They have to bring back napalm. I hope they don't call veterans back. Mm -mm. (laughs) You're not going back. (laughs) He said you have a degree now. You can be an officer. Right. (laughs) Uh, I'm going to be a general. Give me a Jonathan in the chat, he's passionate about this one. He said, some of us would have exposed the fake moon landing in the last 50 years. They always had better intel and uh, counter intel. We had superior military power. Um, I'll give you that. I will say that the KGB and all those guys and the Russians had a very superior intel spy network. Uh, Air Force received... So this is a new article that, that just came up from uh, Deadleg. Deadleg, what, what, tell us about it. Air Force is bringing back retirees to active duty. Mm-hmm. Department of Defense has reached out to uh, former members of the service to come back to service oh. for some reason. For some reason. All right, we're going to jump into this next story before we do. May 2nd, May 2nd at Mulligan's with the Anti-Hero After Party for the Anti-Hero Podcast After Party um, for Street Cop Training Week. Uh, We will be there with Tyler, with Brent. We got a lot of special guests coming up there. Uh, Conservative Anthony will be there at Mulligan's with us. We will have... uh, It's in Florida. It's in Orlando, though. And um, just outside Orlando on May 2nd. So, um, should be a really fun, fun after party. There's, um, I, I, I think, uh, there's a couple of keynotes that will be a street cop tre- training that are going to venture over. Um, and I'll get more to come on that. So if you guys are in the Orlando area, um, and of course that is sponsored by ghost bed pillows at go on ghost bed mattresses at ghostbed.com forward slash wolf pack sleep. So good. It's scary. Uh, if I'm going to watch a movie, it's hard for me to go to theaters because I like to do it from my ghost bed, from the comfort of my ghost bed. And what I mean by that is that the ghost bed with the adjustable base, you can lean the adjustable base damn near into a couch brother. And you can watch a movie like you're, you're in a couch. It's, it's insane. Um, right now across the board, 50% off site wide. They love first responders that much. These are beds made in the good old USA, 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 USA. Uh, they got the cooling sheets, the cooling technology. Listen, I don't travel. I'm gone on the road for the next four months. So hopefully I think I'll be with the Tim pool crew, um, this weekend, but it's not for me. I'm not that cool. They, they invited my kids to come skateboard with them again. So last time I went, my kids skateboarded with Tim pool. Do you know how many words Tim pool said to me? Zero. Like three. three. Like, Hey, how are you? Hey, how are you for? Four words. I'm Tim Pool. I'm Tim. Nice to meet you. Maybe seven words total. So he talked to your kids. Yeah, he talked like, to my kids. They skateboarded they with skateboard. my kids. They he's like, a skateboarder, right? Yeah, you, they were totally you, cool. You, you yeah. don't skateboard. It's, yeah. It's just like R. Kelly talking to them young girls, and the parents was there. He, no, that was not. He didn't give, that's, a, he didn't give that a shit about them parents. Like he didn't care about them parents being there. No. His focus was on the girls. No, just like skateboarding's him. different. Skate, well, no, I'm just saying, you know, a lot of times, I mean, it's just like I coach basketball, right? Youth basketball. Yeah, yeah you don't talk it, to the it's, parents. It's good about the parents, but I don't want to talk to the parents because the parents, I, I, to be honest, I don't even like them at the practice. Right, right. Them, the fathers will come and be watching and want to try to tell you, no, your mm-hmm. son is not LeBron James, okay? Yeah. Your son is not Michael Jordan, okay? he. I'm trying to get him to do, have good skills, develop his own style of, of basketball and play. All them kid boys, they want to go out there, oh, LeBron. 
Right. Steph Curry for three and don't hit the backside of them. All. <laughs> you know I mean? Damn. So yeah, pass, like, you gonna get that. Yeah, Especially your kids. Y'all yeah. three of them, they real good. I do. I'll so, be, we're meeting a photographer tomorrow, yeah. early in the morning. Yeah, they, you know, and, and a photographer was hitting me up. I'm like, oh, what's up, photographer? You want to take pictures of this good looking <laughs> dude? He's they like, your want, kid's available for photo shoot tomorrow. I'm like, see, that's all. They just want your permission. <laughs> I know <laughs> to use your kids. Hey, oh, they're, no, they're no, phenomenal skateboarders. They're way cooler than I'll ever be. You can go follow them. Duke Tansy, August Tansy, Alki Tansy. Tansy fam, go follow him on social media. But anyway, uh, my my son, you know what he asked for for his birthday? My eleven year old, a ghost bed pillow. He also asked if he could be sponsored by Ghost Bed, and oh, I was okay. like, bro, you have a lot of sponsors right now. Like Death Death Wish, I mean not Death Wish, um, Liquid Death just sent them like five cases of I, water, like palace of water, for my comedy, uh, sparkling man. water and stuff. I know, right? Gosh. But uh, he, he, they like my ghost bed so much that he wants he wants his own ghost. If Ghost Bed sends my child or my children ghost beds and pillows i always so fucking mad i'll be like man i'm <laughs> I, i'm gonna have to dumb wrong? these kids i won't have to beat them <laughs> and like shame them and like uh, give them like some kind of like weird anxieties to like bring them down a notch as i don't want kids cooler than me you know what i mean like my kids can be cool they can't be cooler than me no i'm just kidding but yeah so this wednesday this w- not this wednesday this week will be there um so i'm taking my ghost bed pillow with me and then um following weekend i'll be in florida and i gotta take mine and then i'll be with jonathan emord in their senate campaign in virginia doing some stuff with them in virginia beach the following week um and so i'll have my ghost bed with them and then i'm supposed to have something another thing on the books with uh, anthony so for me it's the ghost bed and, and the ghost bed pillow is a must like if you get the ghost bed don't not get the ghost bed pillow it's foolish it's like you have the cool side of the pillow all the so time the pillows don't come with the bed if you get the whole bed i probably they probably will throw them in i'm sure there's there's all sorts of bundles you can bundle it up zero percent do down zero percent finance pillow, and big one long ass pillow yeah they, they do ones. yeah and they make these silky ones that are like for girls with curly hair they've thought of it all they thought of it all so they're already ghost bed.com so, so forward slash jerry carroll won't sink won't, mm. won't sink no nah, it's good yeah no it's all good I for got, the jerry curls i have family that have jerry curls <sighs> um <laughs> Do you really? Oh, I'm serious. I have Still. a couple of aunts that have just uh, they wet too. The wet things. Like you hug them, you got to do your jaw like that because they done hug you and got. Yeah. Also, uh, doing an open mat roll for Redefy Foundation. We're collecting money for that. If you want to, um, any super chat from now until the end of May when this event occurs, it's an open mat for the Redefy Foundation. They give scholarships to wounded and disabled veterans for jujitsu. Um, they pay for their jujitsu. They pay for all their gear for jujitsu. Um, if you super chat and you put We Defy in the super chat, right? So far, we have raised uh, almost $150. We got, uh, I don't know, $70 from Nijkin, $20 from Mer 530 20 more bones from Will Cray, um, $30 um, uh, from Billy Unite. I know, I mean, I spelled his name wrong. So uh, we are getting a whole bunch of stuff. We're, um, I sent the first check in today from all the stuff we have. It was just over 120 something dollars. So if you guys get to a thousand with the Wolfpack by the end of May, I think it's May 27th or something like that. Um, and we're not at 85 bucks. There was a couple more people that, that, uh, that added on. So it was 120 is what I, is what I sent in today from the account. Um, if you get if, if the wolf pack gets me to a thousand, so for every twenty dollars, I am going to spar jujitsu for one minute without a break. So right now I'm at like I think like eight minutes uh total. Um if we get to a thousand dollars, which is like 50 minutes or something like that, it's 50 minutes of continuous sparring in a Hulk Hogan yellow speedo and a Hulk Hogan style speedo. I will be doing these roles. So, Oh my God, Mario Lopez coming. In. Mario Lopez. Did Mario Lopez just get his purple belt? Actually, Mario, did you just, I know you were a blue belt. Did you just get your purple belt? Mario, uh, the Mario, Mario Lopez. Lopez. Is, that, is that Mario from <laughs> saved by the bell? I mean, maybe it says Mario Lopez. It's the only Mario Lopez I know that has a hundred dollars. So, uh, and he it does. You just Mario Lopez. It's the Mario Lopez. It is. <laughs> it's the Mario Lopez from the failure to stop chat group. <laughs> oh, okay. I mean, I we, to about say who's to know? We don't know. There's no picture <laughs> there. It could be the real Mario. Just go with it. It's the real Mario Lopez. It is a real Mario Lopez. Hundred dollars. Thank you. Um, and let me add that. Let me just let me write it down. If I don't write it down, um, I will get confused. Mario Lopez down for a hundo. So we'll put another hundred in there. That is awesome. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. So uh, one step closer, a quarter of the way there to rolling 
50 minutes straight. Well, 100, that's two, four, six, eight. That's five more minutes on top. So now we're at 11 minutes of continuous sparring. I'm going to get choked so many fucking times. And then you guys can go over under on how many times I get choked in 50 minutes. And there will be some big hitter jujitsu guys there. So anyway, yeah, um, we'll go back to this girl. They're huh? going to have you little girl. <laughs> no, no, no. It'll be, it's, it'll be <laughs> around Robin. So I will roll with somebody until they choke me out or tap me out or I tap them out. And then another person jumps in. So it won't be the same person. They'll be fresh. I'll be just getting more and more tired so i either have to get a tap really quick or like let them tap me which is gonna suck so um i'm gonna have to pace myself and, and find some good rolls some fun rolls we'll see what happens what are you? um and i'll be the only guy there i am a one stripe white belt this one rank above white belt uh yeah well probably like so at our gym like you first get like a blue stripe which means you can um roll with other people. So you have to do like a certain amount of classes or wait until you prove to the coach. This is not Taekwondo, right? No, no, no. This is like jujitsu sparring. This is like, like, uh, like wrestling with like some crazier stuff, like MMA style oh. wrestling stuff. And, um, and then you can get a red stripe, which means you can stand up and spar. And then you get your white stripe, which is just like your white stripe, right? belt, officially kind of like a, a white belt. I probably won't get so another belt for like a couple of years. Let me ask you this. Cause yeah, do you learn how to strike as well? Um, no, they they do. If you want to stay for kickboxing and Muay Thai, yeah, you do a lot of striking in Muay Thai. But right now, it's all about the the ground game. Oh. Yeah, those are for I, kids. Those I, are the bells for kids. Because I was gonna ask you, what, See, you, that's what, would, what would you find correct. find more gratifying? Okay. Choking somebody out or knocking them out. With well, a, so with you can punch. choke them out or you can tap them out. You can do like wrist locks. You can do foot locks. You can do Camoros. You can do Americanas. You can, you know, get shoulder taps, knees. Like there's a lot of different taps besides just choking. Matter of fact, a lot of the cops that train BJJ will only go for like wrist locks, ankle locks, leg locks, and things like that because they're not allowed to choke in real life and they don't want to get used to, right. to choking. Um, I think what would be more gratifying I'll tell you this. I don't know, man, because I've knocked some people out as a cop. I remember the first person that I ever knocked out as a cop and he hit the ground and then woke up violently convulsing and uh, throwing up and he had to go to the hospital and he had a pretty significant concussion. That felt really fucking good. And then I when I, about a kid. when I, when I punched <laughs> Eric in the face, this well, other guy, this was really bad and it split his eye and he had to get stitches and I went to the hospital with him to get stitches. That felt really, really good. But in jujitsu, whenever you sink in like a good rear naked choke or, um, I heel hook somebody for the first time the other day. And, um, it feels pretty fucking good, especially cause I did jujitsu four to five days a week for four months and didn't get one person to tap. Yeah. Four days a week, five days a week sometimes for four months and not one person that I could get to tap. And I got tapped thousands of times in four months. So yeah, I, I, I basically choked out a kid. He was 20 years old, but he's still a kid to me. But uh, hell, he had a gun, you know what yeah, I'm saying? So, yeah. And of course, I ain't had no. That was when you were a cop. Yeah, yeah. I ain't had no MMA training. You know, we right. didn't do that. I just watched YouTube. Yeah, <laughs> and watch John Jones. They yeah. said John Jones. That's how he learned how to fight, or uh, what got him interested. Just picking randos going. off the street. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, damn. But it's dude, funny. I'm telling you right now, like I'm so bad at jujitsu, and the last thing I'm thinking about is trying to pick somebody off the street and fuck with them because I'm like, there's a solid <laughs> chance don't know they, you I don't could know fucking story, lose this right. fight. You don't know that story. That's um, it. But it's gonna be a fun event. We defy is great. Um, wait, we jump up and shut that door since that cricket. Yeah, it's just loud. being loud as a mother. We had the doors open in the studio tonight because it feels nice outside. Um, but uh, anyway, thank you guys so much for donating. Uh, that's going to be really nice. Um, let's drop into the um, the rust uh, armor sentence. This is a this is a fun story. You guys are going to like this story. Hannah Guterres. Read Hannah Gutierrez Reed, and I know that a lot of you guys have been following this story, um, especially since we've talked about it several times on this show. Um, this is wild. So we we remember when Alec Baldwin shot that female on the set, um, and it, it was really sad. Now you've been on a bunch of sets mm -hmm. with guns. Mm -hmm. I was just on a set a few months ago with guns. I actually had to give the safety briefing because I was a law enforcement officer and there was a whole bunch of celebrity influencers 
What does that mean? Influencers that had 100K plus followers on social media. Um, and because I had this fake Glock, I had to explain how a Glock worked to the whole, I mean, dude, the whole crew, cameramen, food people, um, all, I mean, you, you don't understand, like these, these sets are massive. There are tons of people, makeup people, food people, 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 people to help you with your script, people to help you with your clothes. I mean, there's a person for about everything on one of these sets. And I didn't know that I was going to have to do this. And I show up and I'm freaking out because it's the first time I've ever been like on a real set for a real like TV series. It's going to go on um, Hulu and I think maybe like Netflix or something like that. Uh, it's going to go on a bunch of places, I don't, but it comes out this summer. It's called Office Joe. Look it up. Office Joe show. I play the cop in episode six and seven. Um, and it's, it's a comedy and I had a pretty funny part. So I was pretty excited. So I was stressed out because I wanted to memorize my lines and I didn't want to fuck up. Right. And then when I got there and I saw like Jared Taylor was there, a mandatory fun day who's blowing up right now. I'm a big fan of him. He was there. Um, the Olympic medalist wrestler was there. I, I mean, there was a bunch of dudes. Um, Tim Kennedy wasn't there but he was just in the scene that I was supposed to be a part of. So that was kind of, yeah, you can put those pictures up. That's fine. Yeah. That's that. That's got, that's why I say is Tim Kennedy was in this film. I didn't get to meet him that day, but um, there was a bunch of people on the set there. There's mandatory fun day and Jared Taylor from black rifle. Um, yeah. There's a bunch of other guys that you might recognize. Uh, they're all influencers of some sort um, in the, the social media realm. So I didn't want to, be a loser and screw it up. And then all of a sudden they're like, uh, all right, this is Eric Tanzi. And then the guy whispers over me. Yeah. Uh, Guttermuth is in there too. Yeah. Ashley Guttermuth. She's hilarious by the way. Um, they leaned over and they were like, look, dude, just give a briefing and let everybody know that, um, these guns aren't real. And I was like, okay. What, what, um, and he was like, just go through it. Like a standard cop briefing. Like you would do at your police department. And I was like, <laughs> we don't do that right at the police department like my gun's real all the fucking time right. <laughs> like i don't give briefings lot, ben, but like they were just like just yeah just like just like if you were going into a school or something i'm like no bitch like i don't say shit when i go anywhere with my gun right so i was like i didn't want to be you know, confrontational about it so i was just like um hey guys this is a uh this is a glock i don't even know what kind of glock it is because it's it's not a real glock <laughs> So looks like a replica of a Glock 22, but I don't know who's to tell. Treat all guns. Uh, it doesn't have a magazine, so I can't pull the magazine out to show you that it's empty because this one doesn't exist. It does have a racking slide, but there's no like hollow barrel. There's some kind of a core to it. It's not a real gun. Right. I can't shoot from it. There's nowhere to put bullets. So does anybody have any questions? And then like this one girl was like, um, can you just pull the trigger for us to make sure? And so I put the gun in my mouth and pulled the trigger. You should aim it at her. Ah, she I, be ducking like, I ah. stuck it in my mouth and went all day. And everybody was like, and then bro, I'm pretty sure that they were like, not happy about it, but like, what, what were they going right, to say? Right. You know, it's like, I already did it. But yeah, I shoved this fake fucking pistol in my mouth. <laughs> Don't be like that one dude. What was he? I think he was SBI or FBI, black dude with dreads. He was in a classroom teaching people, kids. Yeah. Like, yeah that, that. Boom, boom. Wow. Shot himself. Shot himself. I'm all right. No, I I'm knew for right. a fact this was not a real gun. <laughs> right. Like, there was no doubt in my mind that this was no real gun. So, anyway. My question is, and I think everybody's question is, is when you get on the set. Now, I think the girl that they did. <laughs> yeah, here's video. the video. If you're watching on YouTube, <laughs> you can see the video. Oh, God. You can leave it up while I talk. No problem. So, um, and that guy doesn't even look like a real cop. Uh, like, it's so strange. So, uh, she was like not a trained armor. She just got designated the armorer on this set. So it seems, and I could be wrong on this. Um, I I can only go off of like what she was crying about and how she was talking about like she doesn't have any um <laughs> he shot himself yeah, she doesn't have any experience a lot of experience she only was acting on the experience I have and so that that makes me lead to believe that like she, maybe on set they just said hey you're the armor right make sure these guys are real <laughs> is that was that like that on your set or did you have like a real legit armor no, they, no it was me I mean all every movie you know we had the guns they know they knew I was. 
you know, police officer, military. And they said, oh. Right, but if you didn't have a real policeman or not, a uh, military I, guy. That was it. That was me. No, but I'm saying if, if this set didn't have one, they didn't have a you, who would they get? Somebody who would, well, it's about liability. So they would they would have to have somebody. So you, how you know, did this girl become the armor with no armor or training? She must have knew. She just she taught a good uh, talked a good game. game? Or yeah, she did a good. Well, you know. it doesn't matter. She got sentenced to eighteen months in prison for involuntary manslaughter. You can put this up on the screen. Um, and it's, I thought that was a little rough for an accident, but then I saw her jail calls. Oh my gosh. Her jail calls are what fucked her. How do you not know that your jail calls aren't recorded? Mm -hmm. uh, been to jail <laughs> yeah. And the jury did it in less than two hours. One juror after the sentencing said Gutierrez had not done her job to ensure the weapons, the weapons were safe on set. Gutierrez read opted to make a statement before court saying her heart aches for the Hutchins family, friends, and the film industry at large. The armor requested the judge sentence her to probation, noting she would accept any classes she ordered. I am saddened by the way the media sensationalized her traumatic tragedy and portrayed me as a complete monster, which has actually been the total opposite of what's in my heart, she said. And I went for this because I watched her cry on the stand and I felt really, really bad for her. And then they, then I went and saw the, um, the tapes. So the jail tapes, bro, she calls the judge a fucking idiot. She called the jury retards and assholes. And they played this. Well, in I mean, front of she, all of them. They gotta say she upset. She no, this was before. This was before oh, she got okay. sentenced. Oh, wow. This is like days before. And she was talking all sorts of shit and laughing and joking on the phone. We were going to try to play it for you, but we couldn't find one on YouTube that hadn't, didn't have all the interruptions. Um, so maybe we'll just bang a reel out with some of the clips yeah. later. Karma, karma, karma. That's what she right? did, you know? Right? I was going to try to uh, see... Uh, um, so Alex Baldwin, what you think? I mean, he the one that pulled the trigger. They gonna all of them could get sued. If I'm the family, well, he's I mean, coming I'll up next. Him. Alex Baldwin's up next. Yeah, I'll so he's got to be shitting his pants. He's like, man, this is not. <laughs> she the one that just made the gun safe. Yeah, I'm the one that pulled the trigger. Much time, hell, how much time they gonna get me for pulling the trigger? Yeah, yeah. I have a clue um, on how she got the job with quote. Go ahead. Yeah, let's hear it. Oh yeah, they gonna they gonna sue whoever uh, maybe because her dad has been in the film industry his most of his adult life as a sharpshooter and film consultant for firearms. Oh, oh so she kind of was a subject and a subject matter expert through daddy. Pops. Um, and then through his probably through his name around. Oh, my father! I learned from the best. My father, growing up, I learned blah blah blah. That's what got her the job. Yeah, without proper credentials and everything. Right. And you see what happened. I bet Dad was like, "I ain't teach her shit. I don't know what the fuck <laughs> she got this. Don't y'all come at me." <laughs> yeah. So here we go. Listen to this. And this is from USA Today. In response to her request for a new trial, state prosecutor Carrie Morsey asked that she be sentenced to a maximum sentence of 18 months due to the lack of remorse, citing the phone calls that she made from jail in which she said the jury were a bunch of idiots and the judge was paid off. You can't say that shit before sentencing. Uh, Bow, uh, Bowl said Gutierrez Reed was the scapegoat for a chaotic production, which I think more than her should be in trouble for this. Like it does to me appear that she is a scapegoat um, for a chaotic production where she was not given time to check weapons. Uh, I don't think that is ever an excuse. He blamed Hutchins death on Baldwin's reckless use of firearms and his efforts to rush and control filming as lead actor, writer. But I was like, I can kind of buy all that. Um, but at the end of the day, if you take up the job armor, that's like, really that's your only job is to make sure that there aren't any real bullets or that any of these guns have real bullets in them. Um, you should be sit, standing right there at every, every scene that has weapons. You should be there. Even when they say, uh, cut, cut. All right, we're going to take a 15 minute break. I need to collect all y'all weapons. All y'all weapons need to come and put them right here. Y'all go eat your sandwich, your cheese sandwich, smoke your cigarettes, whatever. And when you come back, we're going to wrap, you know, yeah. get them safe, get them set ready. So on the set I was on, whenever we did breaks or whatever, um, I kept the gun on me the whole time. 
Um, unless we were, unless I was not going back to the green room or whatever you call it. If I was going anywhere else, I had to like not be dressed like a cop because <laughs> I was dressed like a fake cop, you know? But if I was just going and I had somebody escort me to and from my scenes. So if they escorted me back, I kept the gun on me. But as soon as I got back to the scene, I had to do the same thing over. I had to pull the gun out. I had to show everybody that there was no magazine. I had to rack it back, show everybody. You know what I mean? I had to go through the whole rigmarole again, um, but without putting it in my mouth to pull the trigger. And then I would pull the trigger and, and go on. So uh, it all worked out for me. I don't know. What do you guys think? 18 months. Is it? She's getting the whole sentence. 18 months. She's staying in. Um, she's going to be incarcerated in a women's prison for 18 months. Look, if you can, if, if I, if I could show it to you now, I would go back and try to find those manuscripts. If you're bored on duty, they are pretty damning. She talks about jails kind of like a, a day camp that it's way easier than she shot it, thought it would be. She's doing a lot of laughing, a lot of giggling. Um, I don't really have a problem with that. You got to keep yourself in high spirits, especially if you're incarcerated. I get it. But knowing that these jail tapes could be played, calling the jury a bunch of idiots and fucking retards. <laughs> oh, man. I oh. I mean, I wouldn't say that even if I knew their phone call wasn't recorded. Just knowing the fact that there's so many people around and this is so like sensationalized by the media already i wouldn't want to call the jurors a fucking retard in fear that another inmate might make a back door deal with like e entertainment or you know what i mean like phone a friend and be like hey this bitch on the phone was calling the jury fucking retards i mean any chance that that could get out and hurt me you know what i know we're gonna talk about it in a minute but I, i'm surprised that you know we're gonna talk about oj and all that but I'm surprised that didn't happen to him while he was locked up on the other side. Right, bad joke on wall. I mean, well, he had I know it. that another inmate tried to get information out of him as far oh, as the Nicole. I you bet know, you his lawyer and coached then. him up real good. <laughs> right before we dive into that, because we got to get into this uh, OJ Simpson thing, um, which is the big news for the night. Uh, Factormeals.com, meal planning to the next level. Listen, don't, uh, don't get caught uh, hungry at work. It's your first responder gigs over there. Don't be a peasant either. Don't be eating your bologna sandwiches and coming in with your fatty fast foods, especially if you're an overweight cop. Look, man, listen, it's not the time to be an overweight cop. Violence on police is way up. You need to be getting in shape, cutting it down, and be part of the, the solution and not part of the problem. Don't be a victim. We don't need to be carrying fat cops out of the way because they couldn't get shit done. Listen, I get it. I was law enforcement. I've been fat as well. It gets away from you. It gets away from you quick. I'm not, all I'm telling you is don't give up. Get in shape, get it right, get it done. And uh, look, you know, when you show up with a factor meal and it's healthy, you can get the calorie conscious, you can get the protein heavy for trying to get jacked, you can get the breakfast. Um, all these things are chef prepared, fresh and never frozen meals, uh, ordered or, uh, delivered directly to you on your doorstep. Um, you can get the shakes, you can get the smoothies. Anything that you want to get your day cooking, by the time you go to the grocery store, by the time you come home, you cook all the individual meals, you parcel it all out in your little Paytex and your Pyrex dishes, you're, 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 already, uh, you're already losing money. With Factor Meals, you buy it, it gets delivered to your house, two minutes in a microwave, you don't have to do anything about it, spend that time with your family, spend it court prepping, do whatever, and the meals are absolutely fantastic. Matter of fact, there's a bunch of you guys that love to send me pictures of your Factor Meals. I love that. I'm going to start posting them up on our uh, Failure to Stop Instagram channel, maybe our Facebook. I'll do like a little collage of them. Um, a bunch of you guys have sent me those, and I really do appreciate them. And, and you always tell me how good they are. Nobody's ever complained. Somebody did say that the green beans were smoky, but I don't know if that was negative. He said the green beans are really smoky. He didn't say I like it or dislike it. That's all he said. So I don't know. I've never had any of the green beans that I didn't like. Matter of fact, there was one, I think it was in the uh, ranch chicken meal, but it was like, had like this garlic butter over it. It was delicious. Loved it. But uh, I, I guess you probably don't eat green beans with garlic butter, do you? Say what? Yeah, I didn't think so. Um, <laughs> yeah, there is roasted garlic chicken. That's probably the one. Anyway, delicious. I love it. You know what? To be honest, I just started eating my green beans like that. Oh, really? Because normally, I mean, shoot. We they cook them and then season them with a ham hock or yeah. a turkey neck, mm -hmm. and they be good. But though I guess they call those fresh, they yeah. like fresh, and yeah. they put a little oil and a little whatever. Yeah, they don't cook them that long. Butter, yeah. And I, 
I like them. I like them. Yeah, I like them now. I like them. You still like any, what, your uh, your factor meals? I had to put them on pause for a minute because they was. Well, your whole family was eating them though. Yeah, they was that's crazy. Shit up. Hey, that's crazy. Hey, I can't do that. that. Yeah, like I, I like I know. I remember when you were complaining. Like, I yeah. you don't get any to yourself. And like, <laughs> right. I, I mean, they it's not good ones. Huh? You know, it's like it's 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 good when you're ordering it just for yourself for your own meal. But like when you're ordering one factor meal for like every person in your household, that's yeah. out of control. I wouldn't do it either. Um, and then we have the wellness company, uh, prepping you for the next pandemic. Uh, be a pandemic guy. Be a planner. Go ahead and go to the wellness company. This is uh, all the famous doctors you know of. McCullough, Dr. Drew, all the guys that's been on the Joe Rogan podcast. Uh, these are meds that, uh, you know, your ivermectins, your z packs, your monochloral things, uh, all the things that, that are pre-prescribed to you to keep you well and uh, through anything. Because you know that the zombies are going to hit the CVS and this, the Walgreens and everything. Uh, that's the first thing that's going to happen in a pandemic. They're going to go after those places and yeah, you're probably going to get stabbed or shot in the process. So go ahead and get ahead of that. Go to the wellness company, pre-prescribe you all your pandemic medicines and they'll deliver them right to your door. You don't have to go out. Um, they come in these like survival cases that zip up. They're really, really, really cool. I need to bring one of mine out here um, uh, to, to the studio and show you guys. Uh, the bags are really, really cool. We'll show you the bags on Wednesday for the last call show. Um, but anyway, yeah, go over to the wellness company, promo code Wolfpack, and uh, the factormeals.com forward slash Wolfpack50. All right, last story of the night. Here we come. OJ Simpson on his deathbed. Did he admit there's a lot of conspiracy out there? Well, he made his kid sign an NDA, this and that. Listen, all the media headlines, everybody's saying there was no, there was no confession. He mostly talked about golf, golf tournaments, and wanting more water. It's pretty dark. I don't have any remorse. I don't feel sorry for OJ Simpson. So I don't really give a fuck um, about him wanting water or to watch the golf tournament. But let me ask you this and people in the chats weigh in. I want to hear from you guys too on this one. If you were dad, did that committed that murder. And you know, we all know that OJ did it. How, how do you know he did it? The oh, justice system, oh, no, the no, justice fucking me, justice no. system that you so it much failed. support. I don't support failed, the justice it failed, system. It failed you and people who wanted to see him guilty. It failed you because he was found not guilty. But he was guilty. How? How? Oh, the the, How? the, evidence, the evidence is overwhelming. It, How? The evidence is How overwhelming. Be overwhelming, but his ass get off. Yeah, have you not tell watched me. the documentaries? Tell me. Fuck the I'll, tell, I'll tell you. The court because case. the cops didn't handle the, the evidence correctly. And it got thrown out because he had a really good lawyer. Uh, Who fault okay. is that? Oh, well, is it his fault? I mean, is I it think his that, team's fault. I think his lawyer's team's fault, sure. How? But he was civilly guilty. He, he lost the civil, civil suit. How? He lost the civil but suit. See, that's one thing I don't understand. I need somebody to tell me how if you are found not guilty in a criminal suit, that, that them same people okay, how the survivors come back and sue you civilly. I, I never understood that. Well, because it, the preponderance of evidence is different in a civil case than it is in a case you go when you go to jail. I think, what is it for a civil case? It's 51% chance that he's guilty? But, is that see, what it is? But, see, that's, uh, that's, to me, that's just... So here you go. How about this? I arrested a guy for DUI. Mm -hmm. I knew he was 100% hammered drunk. Mm -hmm. I saw he's hammered drunk. I took him to the hospital because he was hammered drunk. Mm -hmm. He was actually more than hammered drunk. He was on uh, 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 PCP. And um, he had the keys in the car. The car was driving. It was still in drive. When I yanked him out, I had to have another officer grab him, yank him back. And I had to jump in the passenger side, scramble all the way in to try to get to the brake so that I could put the car into park with my hand. Very scary moment for all of us. Good thing this guy was pretty much comatose because of how much alcohol he had. Now, the court case w went that... He was not a, the toxicologist whom we paid $5,000 to, you know, the, for the court to provide a toxicologist and to explain to the jury or not the jury to the, uh, to the judge. Cause it wasn't a jury trial. It's just a DUI, um, about toxicology. He said that had we had not got him an ambulance, had I not called an ambulance before we even, now I called an ambulance because I was like, if this doesn't work, I'm probably going for a ride and there's going to be an accident at the end of it. I want to have an ambulance like on its way. Okay. 
they said, how did we not done that? He would have died from an overdose because he had enough shit in his system to kill him or whatever. Yes. The toxicologist, the, the, the defendant's attorney said, was he in control of his body at that time that Mr. Tansy, would he have had enough drugs in his system that he would have been in control of his body at all? And he said, no, absolutely not. Like this man was dying. He's like, let me read you like what an overdose normally looks like. And this was like higher than a normal overdose. Like this dude was dying from all this shit. They closed the statement to the judge. His name was judge Nagel. He said, judge, your honor, you heard the toxicologist, your expert claim that he was not in control of himself. So how could he be in control of a motor vehicle if he wasn't in control of himself? The judge said, you're right. If he was not in control of himself, he could not be in control of a motor vehicle. Even though he was in the seat, the car was running, the car was in drive, and I I pulled him over uh, from watching him have a seizure. Uh, parked over, you know, he pulled off the road and was convulsing in the whole nine yards. So <clears throat> they gave him not guilty. Now, was that man guilty? 100%. He got in a car, he did drugs, and he drove around. And he pulled over luckily and had a seizure. So he is guilty, but he was found not guilty. But that doesn't mean that he's not guilty. That motherfucker did it. Now, if he would have killed somebody in the same thing, it would not take away that he didn't kill that person. Okay. I don't care what the okay. court said, so, guilty so, or not so guilty. let me ask this. He supposedly killed two people. Yeah. Right? Man and woman. Yeah. Out in the what? No, it's not supposedly. He well, fucking well, killed well, them. Eh. Motherfucker found yeah, no, they, they no more. found he the knife. Like, nah, he did. They, they found the knife. You know, they they found the knife with all this DNA in it just because they couldn't use the knife as evidence. It was one thing that wasn't allowed to use. But like, what about the, the those gloves, gloves fit him? And if they you notice, they there is a picture. Fit? There is a quit. Well, the, the <laughs> fit, but you know for a fact that you can put your hands into something and make it not fit. Come on, man. I do my dick like that with a condom all the time. Yeah. Yeah. You know that you're fluffing that thing up. All I'm saying. Is you know he's guilty. Let now let me ask this. And if you don't know, and, and you're one of his children, and you think he might be innocent, I guess that changes the outcome. But I'm pretty sure that we all know, and especially if, I mean, unless you're just living in denial, he fucking killed them. Let, let's see. Would you, if you okay. were dad, in that situation, killed two people like that, mm -hmm. and he wanted you there? for his end of days and he wanted you to sign an NDA before you could come in the room. Would you do it? Hell no. Cause he dying. Yeah. He going to be gone. So no, I, I wouldn't sign shit. I wouldn't sign shit, but here's my thing. Would you have gone? Yeah. If th that's my father, that's my father. Dude, if my dad murders hey, two but, but, fucking but, people, see, I'm not. This is where you, you know, I'm take, dude, take, he's take, fucked. Take your Fuck. personal feelings out of it. Okay. Take your personal feelings out of what he was accused of, what he was put on trial for. Um, his team of lawyers, he, you know, probably went bankrupt, lost a lot of money having Johnny Cochran and, and his whole the Kardashian. Of, yeah, all them defending him. He was put through the justice system at that time. What we had, you know what I'm saying? The defendant, uh, his, his his team, just like when they pick the jury trial, what they do before they they just don't pick 12 motherfuckers and sit right there. The, the defense and the prosecutor has to go through and select their jury. No, and I get it they, that know, he won. Well, 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 that's what I'm saying. It's, it's, it's damn if you do, damn if you don't. The justice system did right if they would have put the needle in his arm. Everybody... You're not gonna satisfy everybody. There's gonna be people out there talking about that. Fuck no, 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 no. They, they, no, no, no. they won because but, they didn't cross their T's and dot but, their eyes, but, but it still doesn't but, mean but, that but, you I'm, didn't I'm do it. Where the real problem with that OJ, it divided America. It, it was all about race. It was all about race. If you go back and look at the oh, yeah, footage yeah, sure. and you see when people they even had them on the Oprah Winfrey show. Oprah Winfrey had a live show and they was watching the damn uh his his verdict being read and you can they was panning on white people panning on black people black people all hugged up like this and shit with their fingers crossed hoping that he get off the right. white people were sitting there looking like this like they better find yeah. this motherfucker guilty. because he fucking did and, it and we and, all knew he did when, it. He, when they said not guilty uh, black people, man, you would think that that go Martin Luther King came back alive. You so, know what I'm saying? But here's the thing, though. 
there was enough evidence, and and it's way more than reasonable. Of listen, it, when his blood was found on the crime scene, his blood was found on the crime scene. They weren't allowed to use that because he has great lawyers. His fingerprints on the knife because one police officer put the knife in the bag and didn't initial the bag. All of a sudden, they're going to throw that evidence out. But if you if that evidence was still to remain, it would one hundred percent prove that he did it. So he still did it. But here's the thing: if if the black people were sell if the black people were holding hands and crossing their fingers on hoping that he was guilty they're only hoping that he's are not guilty they're only hoping that he's not guilty because he would have said race for, he would have said us back 400 years because it's a rape but i i mean he murder's a murder black yeah, people murder right, people right. white no, people no, murder no, people all the time just a murder this was a high profile black guy who was looked at as a hero because he was of his football status and all this and that back in the back in the 60s especially in the 60s right. so then, just like same thing with uh bill cosby bill cosby was a phenomenal uh celebrity black celebrity male celebrity back in the 60s and when all that shit came out about him it that it tarnished everything he good stuff he did his com his jokes his shows everything got tarnished because of that shit that happened that he was accused of doing that way back in the 60s. Same thing with OJ. See that right there. It 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 it, it divided that OJ Simpson. Yeah. A lot of people didn't know who the fuck OJ was as a football player. The thing, the things he did. They just remember him from the damn airport commercials. They remember his ass from airplane. Uh Le Leslie, uh, what's his name? Liam Nelson. What's uh yeah, Liam Nelson. Uh, Liam Nelson, his his uh, uh airplane, not yeah, airplane and uh, naked gun movies. That's all they remember. And he was a sports announcer. He was a commentator. They remember him from that. But when he did that, you know, was accused of the murder and all that shit, you know, and then went to trial. Yeah, black people was like, oh hell no. Because he's being accused of not only murder, yeah, but I mean, I don't see any murder. Two white people. Like, I don't. Two white people. See, I don't want, like, if, 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 race, if a black person race. kills two black, I'm, I'm speaking on behalf of the whites mm -hmm. here, the white folk. Don't um, much time. I don't know anymore. I mean, maybe back then, but even when I was watching that back when it was going on, mm -hmm. it wasn't, I didn't care. Like, it, it's not like I'm going to hate black people because one black dude married two, murdered two white people. But like, that doesn't bother me. Uh, murder is a murder. Like right. bad people are bad people. It doesn't matter what color they are. I understand that, but you got to look at and his. He is a bad person. He was a popular person. He, well, so was P. Diddy. So is uh, yeah, yeah, Harvey he, Weinstein. So yeah, is Jeffrey Epstein. Yeah, so see, is Joe okay. Biden. So is Donald Trump. But doesn't see, excuse see, here's it. The thing, here's the thing with P. Diddy. How many white people are coming out talking shit about I have him? No idea. Him? Exactly. You don't have an idea. But I guess I bet you can guess how many black people are upset and mad about the shit he's doing no nah, yeah i would have no idea oh, there's a lot there's a lot and as a matter of fact when you go on twitter you look you have people defending not really defending p diddy but they're saying see that's fucked up we don't look after our own we don't look at our own well i mean i'm like this fuck him if he did it throw the hammer at his ass my only throw problem with p him. diddy is I mean, like, not my own problem, but my whole thing with the whole PD thing is, is that there was a lot of people that knew he was a fucking loser, and they never called him out for it. I mean, dude, it's like R. Kelly. You can't tell me R. Kelly was telling his hired hands, "Hey, go get that, uh, go out there in the crowd and get me a fifteen-year-old. Yeah, go out there get me a young hottie." They already know he liked girls under eighteen, and they asked, and they, and they did it. Them girls, back. right? They're yeah. just as dirty. Just hell yeah, yeah. Like, yeah I mean, I like know the parents was was bad too for allowing them to go go with him you know some of them was like oh he said she, she was gonna be a backup dancer for him or like mm -mm, mm -mm, yeah mm -mm. i mean I, that's my problem with it is like if you knew then you're just you're just as guilty but let me go back to this i want to go back to this chat i mean maybe maybe you don't think that uh, I, I, if you're if you're oj simpson's child would you go to see your dad on his deathbed, mm -hmm. or if you're a family member and he wanted you to sign an NDA before you came in, mm -hmm. I wouldn't either. I wouldn't sign it, but I mean, I'll go and see see him, you know, because that is your father. That's that's your bloodline. Now, it's been almost thirty years, over thirty years, you know, uh, the case, and and he had multiple children by different women. So I don't know. Did he have kids by Anna Nicole? Uh, dead like did uh Simpson have kids with Anna Nicole? Oh, I guarantee you those kids wouldn't go see him. Well, then again, I don't know. I don't know. I wouldn't go see him. I don't know. I know he had he had conflict with 
a couple of his kids. And I think that might have been <clears throat> that might have been it. Because you got to think about it. They had two Why? kids. He had two kids. Oh shit. And I'm pretty sure her side, Nicole Brown side of the family, was in the, the child's ear, you know, or even if it weren't in his ear, they was, you know. Like some families, they they talk out loud, and, they, and that little kid sitting there and they talking about my daddy. <laughs> you know, he, he, they really my mama side of the family really believe my daddy killed my mama. So yeah, I can see if it's a kid. The other two, other kids by the other hell, they probably hey, my mama alive and well, she ain't get killed. But I, I feel bad for you. But my daddy was found not guilty. Yeah. In the court of law. Oh well, I so, know. I do the court of law thing doesn't matter to me. Like you know, when somebody did something, you know, they did. It's just like with the lawyers. Be honest, man. I was watching. Uh, what's the name? Um, like I mean, just because you can confuse and retard a but, jury but, but doesn't if, still mean that but, you're but innocent you of what you did. You're a lawyer. You're a defense lawyer. Yeah. Your job is to get your client off. Yeah, no, I get, get it. Them off. I get it. I, I done talked to many of lawyer friends, and they sat there and said, "Yeah, that motherfucker guilty." Oh yeah, I, I represented. They didn't give names and stuff because you right. know, had that client. Oh, I, I mean, dude, I've disclosed stuff. Like, talk to people like, like that all the time. I know his ass was guilty, but my job is to defend him the best way I know. If I can get him off completely, <laughs> that I done my job. If I can get him, you know. See, there's no way I can do that job. Right, and I can get him the the least amount of time or punishment. I've done my job. Yeah, and you wonder, you do wonder about that. You be like, man, would I if I would decide to go to law school and become a lawyer? Would I want to be a defender? You know, open my own practice and just get all these people to come and they sit down and tell me the story, and I'm like, and 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 you know how some of tell, yeah, I, I did it, but now, <laughs> I need, but I'm gonna pay you to get me off. This is what I, I would accept, and now it's your job to do that. I, mean, I wouldn't he, do it. He, he, when he, when you rich like OJ Simpson, like he was, you can afford the Johnny yeah. Cochran's, the top of the line, mm -hmm. and his whole team. Johnny Cochran was great, and then his whole line, all them guys. And when Johnny gave that closing, his damn closing arguments, everybody not guilty. Guilty. Now, Deadleg in the chat says, uh, I'll sign it. You think the dead man can enforce it? Um, I don't know. Like, can a dead man well, enforce an NDA I like think, that? I think his estate. Well, his, because I read somewhere where his estate, the lawyer that's in charge of his estate or that's doing it, he is not, he said he's going to try everything in his power to keep those families for getting collecting that $33 million. Uh, Which okay. families? The Go Goldman's. That's Goldman's. fucked up, yeah. dude. It's been thirty years, and he still owed them thirty three million dollars. The only money group. they collect off his what's ass. that? Like from the civil suit, and yeah. then OJ's kids. Oh. All of his kids that look like they've grown up and had like regular lives. They've gone on just okay. quietly, gone into everything, but they've had okay lives. They've turned out okay. Not did they go years. to? Did they go and see him? Uh, I don't see they anything said, in this. They said family. Did it specifically say kids? I read somewhere they said the kids. I don't know if I could do it. Kids was side if by you by killed my, side. if my dad killed my mom, there's no way I'd go fucking see him. No fucking way. Well, it, it depends on what they believe, though. The court found. I, I really believed if he would have, if they would have, you know, if everything would have went like you said, he would have been and, guilty and found guilty and went to prison. Then yes, I believe they would have cut him off. But by no. the court ruling, they saying, "Hey, you, 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 you're guilty. You're innocent until proven guilty." He was proven. I mean, you know, the court hearings and all that stuff. They ruled he was not guilty of murder. Read that to us, uh, right there. This is coming from Yahoo News. It looks like. Uh, read that After to us. I can't. It may come as a surprise that some to find out O.J. Simpson kids were both by his bedside in the hours before his death. The former NFL star had his ex-wife welcome their daughter Sydney and son Justin years before he was accused of murdering her and later found liable for her death. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, you know, Amber mean, HHH maybe, in the chat you, says, oh, go ahead. I was going to say maybe they might have came to see if he was going to do a uh, a confession, a deathbed confession or something. I don't know. I mean, uh, I think, you know, I don't know, you know, it's just like if somebody, if somebody kills somebody and they found guilty and they go and they give them life in prison, not life in prison, but they get the needle. Yeah. When they die, when they are executed, are you satisfied? If you, if you had a family member who died at the hands of somebody and they gave him 
uh, the death penalty. But <laughs> he's still living after 20 years. 20 years, you know, to me, I think something needs to be done with all these appeals because how in the hell it take you 20 years? You don't kill my mama or somebody. I mean, you kill, family. it depends on who you kill, but like there's somebody in jail that I will be able to get to and offer some sort of money, you know, to make that motherfucker have you, disappear. Have you seen the movie uh, Law Abiding Citizen? Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. I love that movie. Yeah. That's a good, I'm going to watch that one tonight. Yeah, oh, gosh. That's a great movie. But that dude. I, I sort of feel like him. The justice system failed him because he, he went up there and said the right things and that judge got him off because it, it's not her getting him off. It was in the book. It, right, know, right. Yeah, I get it. Like, I get the way the books work. He but. told him. He was like, no, nah, you know, anybody can get off and da 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 I just did this and did that. that. And, yeah. you know, he, he was trying to prove a point, but he done lost it, man. I, I mean, that's how I feel. Him. I mean, but like if you look at New York right now, vigilanteism is going through the roof right now. People are stepping up and whooping some ass. Like they're tired of it uh, because the justice system's not doing anything. They're just cutting people lo loose and uh, crime is just going through the roof. And well, people are starting to take matters in their own hands now. It goes I love back, it. It goes back to me is when you watch movies, you have copycats. Look at movies like The Purge. Okay. Oh, you yeah. Got people out there really believe we should be person in the United <laughs> States. Like, yeah. You know, let them give me 12 hours. I'll go kill a whole bunch of motherfuckers. You know, that's crazy. But when I saw, like I said, I only saw half of Civil War. I'm going to go back and watch it. But it was crazy because the white dude was in there and it was a white dude, white girl, two Asian dudes. And the guy sat there with the gun. He said, what type of American are you? <laughs> you know, oh. like, oh, what type of American? Don't don't spoil it for me, though. though. And old boy, he told, he said, I'm from Florida. So, okay. So he looked at her and she was like, I'm from St. Louis, somewhere like that. And the other dude, boom, after she shot him, after he shot him, the Asian dude was hiding behind the other, his, his friend, and was crying. He said, hold up. What you hiding for? Where are you from? He said, Hong Kong. Boom, blew his ass away. And I was like, wow. Dang, you spoil the whole movie for no, us? No, no, That was just that look. I'm just kidding. I saw that in the trailer, oh, it's, too. It's, it's a whole lot, but. So you're gonna yeah, go back again. and re see it that you yeah, only saw an hour? I only missed, I missed, I caught the last hour. I Damn, that to watch it. Sucks. Everybody I talked to that scene, it was like, man, you know, I'm reading. They talking about that shit gonna happen when Trump, if Trump take off. <sighs> it's gonna happen right now. It's like the country's way more divided right now than it's ever been. Yeah. Um, and I mean, we're so close to civil war. Um, it's OJ. In, I mean, not civil war. I'm talking about World War Three. OJ, OJ was good friends with Donald Trump. Huh? Probably. <laughs> They said Caitlyn Jenner talked shit about him. She she did couldn't stand that going. So now, so Caitlyn Jenner is on side then. She's on oh, the OJ's she hate, guilty. She hate, no, she hate OJ. She's like, oh, I good. hope he burns in hell. I mean, I do too. I fucking hate him. Uh, <laughs> I, he's on my top five list. We we're talking about our top five uh, on Wednesday. He's on my top five. Uh, Tactical dude brings up a great point. It says free Daniel Penny. 100 percent i think daniel penny should be freed we did a whole daniel penny breakdown one of my favorite breakdowns go back and listen to it uh look dude 100 dollars from mario lopez tonight brother thank you guys uh we do this show all for first responders for veterans keeping you guys informed and entertained five days a week in your cop car if you want to see this show continue keep going hit that like and subscribe button on youtube but more importantly go and give us a five-star rating or review on apple Podcasts or spotify it is so important please tell a friend phone a friend come to orlando to the meetup come and see us introduce yourself we'd love to uh, meet up with you guys from myself jay Darrell white comedian who has tons of comedy stuff so make sure you go and follow him and hit him up Guns up, giddy up. Right, right.